everyone thieves man coming at you this is part two of our two-part series taking a look at smart contact integration with unity if you haven't watched the previous video definitely encourage you to watch that and if you do have questions definitely let me know down in the comments below or head over to our discord channel but with that said let's go ahead and dive right into it just as a quick recap, last time we deployed this smart contract to the blockchain and I'll leave a smart contract address as part of the video, which you can go ahead and copy and paste if you wanna follow along with the rest of this guide here. Uh, this is deployed on the Robston network. And then the only thing we really need to do from Remix is go ahead and make sure you can copy the ABI, which stands for the Application Binary Interface. And that is what's gonna allow you to start interacting with your smart contract. So make sure you're able to copy that. But otherwise, you'll first need to go ahead and install Visual Studio Code, which is different from Visual Studios, as well as once you've finished installing Visual Studio Code, getting this Solidity extension, which will be linked in the description. And that's gonna allow you to go ahead and develop that ABI and convert that into a C-sharp interface that we can leverage then with our Unity application using N Ethereum. So for N Ethereum, I'll also leave this as a link in the description. This is what we use in our Unity WebXR tutorials, but primarily this is the sample code that I recommend using. And you can see here, if you scroll down in the readme, that it actually works with 2020. I've tried 2019's LTS, but wasn't able to work. So make sure you're using 2020 as your Unity application uh, version and using this specific project here. So N Ethereum is gonna act as that bridge to allow us to make these blockchain requests. And the rest of this tutorial is really, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the readme here, you'll see an example for how they deployed a ERC-20 smart contract and also started interacting with it, both through the balance APIs, which are just reading the smart contract data, and then as well as actually submitting an API request. And so we'll, we'll walk through those in this example here. So first heading over into Visual Studio Code, we're want, gonna wanna head and just create a new file. So let's call this say test.abi or token.abi, it really doesn't matter. And then going back here into Remix, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that ABI and I'll go ahead and paste it and then save that file. So now we have our ABI definition. And as you can see here, it's pretty much just JSON with the names for functions, the outputs that you would expect, and the type of function that it is. Once we do that, and after you've installed the Solidity extension, you'll then have these options here if you go ahead and right click to generate the c -sharp contract definition. That'll take a few seconds, but once you do that, you will see a few folders within your project and you can see the C-sharp project here, and we're not really interested in that. We're primarily interested here in this contract definition. So this is the C-sharp representation of our code that we can actually pull into Unity. So if you haven't already, I would say, go ahead, clone this repo here. I've gone ahead and done that and opened that up in the 2020 LTS. So you can see that that is open here. And then what I did quite frankly, and, and you can just copy and paste that C-sharp description into Unity. And you can see I've, I've had a couple examples here, and if we go ahead and open that up, you'll see that this is the exact copy of what we created here in Visual Studio Code. You'll see here we have our mint function that we defined within our contract so that we know that it's our own contract really. And then the rest of this is quite frankly, all of the just boilerplate for an ERC-20 token. So very straightforward in that regard. Once you have your contract imported in, the next thing you'll wanna go ahead and do is just create any C-sharp file. And let me know down in the comments below if you want a gist for this, I'm happy to make this into a gist. But the reality of it is, this is, is just the smart contract.cs file that I created that is just taking the boilerplate off of the readme with one key exception, which I'll mention. And we have a Robston URL, which is important to start interacting with the blockchain. And you can create that at infura.io. Uh, and secondarily, you have your uh, account that you want to make transactions from, as well as the smart contract address that you wanna interact with. 
You'll also need a private key, which I have taken off of this for obvious reasons, uh, that you'll need to input into your script so that you are able to actually make write written transactions to the blockchain, which is say, for example, if we wanted to mint actual tokens on the blockchain. So that's the two examples here. Again, these are pretty much copy and paste off of the readme. So definitely, if you do have questions, highly encourage you to follow along and just scroll all the way down to the bottom here of the readme to, to find that, that actual specific code. Um, you can see here the really the two functions that we're doing. One is an example of a reading function. So getting the balance where we just need to query things. There's no private key that's needed. We're just querying the state of the blockchain. And for that, you just call the function here as a query unity request. And you put the function, you put the output and you submit the query, uh, using your infra URL as well as the account. And then you will go ahead and get the result and you can go ahead and print that out. The second one is writing. So here you'll need to set up a private key and you're creating a transaction signed request. So here you're actually going to use your private key to sign the request, submit that into the blockchain so that you can actually verify that it's your entry. And similarly here, the rest of this is just creating that min function, passing any parameters and then polling to wait for the result. One of the things that is different from the readme is that if you are trying to run functions, you actually need to use this use legacy as default option and setting that to true. That's not documented in the readme and it's I think a bug, but unless you do that, you're not actually able to put signed requests through in unity. So make sure you have that set up, but otherwise pretty much identical to how the actual example over in the readme is done. And you can also see in this example that they are including actually, I believe, the ability to pass in parameters. So that that's an example of how you would do that. And that's pretty much it to actually start interacting with your smart contract. Really thought the hard part is defining what exactly you want your smart contract to be, whether that's ERC 20, ERC 721, whether it's something completely custom, defining those functions. And then it's just a manual process to actually get that imported. If you're interested in learning more, definitely let me know down in the comments below or over on Discord. And I'm also looking into blockchain integrations with our VR streaming project. So uh, definitely look for some videos upcoming on that as well. And I think there's a lot of opportunity, especially when it comes to using blockchain for payments that I think I'm really excited for. But uh, otherwise, hope you found this video helpful and thanks so much for watching. Until next time, this has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.